Gracious God, our Father, we thank you once again for this blessed opportunity to be in your house and more especially to have you in our hearts. To speak to us now, Lord, as only you can by your spirit and through your word. We pray, Lord God, that you would encourage us, inspire us, that you would give to us a rhema word and understanding deep underneath the skin of your commitment both to your word and to your people that we may understand Lord God that you've got this thing fixed so we give you all praise glory and honor in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen and amen God bless you I want you to turn your Bibles to a very familiar verse of scripture found in Psalm number 37 and verse 1, Psalm 37 and 1. The recorded of these words, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be envious against the workers of iniquity. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. The people of God historically have had to deal with fightings from enemies all around them within their camp and even within themselves. They've had to deal with the reality that when you belong to God, the enemy will try his best to remove you from that place, not only of fellowship, but the place of relationship with God. We as a people have experienced that through the years, through slavery, through the coming out of uh, inequality and of mistreatment and maltreatment, of misuse and abuse, and all of these things and all we were really able to hold on to were the songs of old and more especially the word of God. And this was one of those words when the master of the slave owners and of the plantations would do ungodly and unthinkable things to men, women, and children on those plantations and how they had no regard for human life and no respect for those who even had love and understanding of God. They treated them as they desired with no humanity at all. And you will see that this word was a relevant word not only in historic realities, but in the reality of experiential understandings of the people of God who've gone through things, uh, dangers, toils, and snares. But the word says in the song, I've already come. And we need to recognize, my brothers and sisters, that this is an encouraging word even today. I don't care how saved you are, how holy you are, how spirit-filled you are, there are going to be enemies who are always trying to take you down, who are always trying to mess with your spirit, who are always trying to contradict 
what God says you are, who God says you are, and what God has called you to do. But here is the encouraging the word, the encouraging word that you need to open your ears and your heart afresh to. Fret not thyself. Now I want to just take a few moments and walk through this if you don't mind. Because you'll be surprised the folk that you fret over. Uh, they're, they're not always the traditional enemies. They, they're not always the people uh, who look at you and laugh in your face and stab you in the back. Some, Sometimes they're the folk you call your best friends. So, Sometimes they're the folk you call family. Uh, Sometimes they're the folk you call the ones you trust and look up to for leadership, for for, for counseling, for, for, for help and aid and support. And sometimes it is the very people you love the most that you wind up fretting over because of the evil things they have done. Notice here, the word is clear. It doesn't say fret not yourself because of yourself it says fret not yourself because of evildoers but now here's what you need to recognize the evildoers are not the ones who are fretting us we are fretting us because of them I don't believe you caught that a lot of times the evil doers just do what they do and they go on about their business. And you're the one who's still worrying about, who's still whining about, who's still crying about, who's still upset about what they have done, past tense, to you. The very word fret means worry. It means anxious. It means a state of upsetness. And so the truth of the matter is, you become all of those things because of evil doers. Now here's what's important. If you don't become upset because of angry, anxious, worried, about the evildoers, then the flip side of that is you become envious against the workers of iniquity. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, my brothers and sisters. It's the latter that truly bothers most of us the worst because even David himself has discovered that God appears to let those who do iniquity seem to get a buy uh, without paying the cost. They, 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 you become envious of the fact that you're trying to walk right, talk right, live right, be right, do right, and yet you see the folk that call themselves not so much Christians or even believers, but people of the world who do anything they seem to want to do, and like, yet it doesn't appear that God bothers them. But the least little thing you do, it seems like God is stepping on your feet. He is correcting you one way or the other, and it's true. Because the Bible says, those whom the Lord loveth, he chastens. He corrects. He disciplines. But the people of the world, listen, they don't belong to him. They're not in covenant relationship with him. They're not in agreement with him. He's not looking for them to do the things he's expecting you to do. That's why you can't get envious of the workers of iniquity. The word iniquity again means vainness foolishness, and nothingness. 
but you let those kind of folk worry your nerve. I'm here at prayer service. I'm here at Bible study. I pay my tithes. I give my offerings. I'm here every time the door is open. And yet some of the folk that don't love the Lord like I love the Lord seem like they're blessed more than me. They have more than me. They get more than me. They're more popular than me. They go on. I mean, you become envious of them. And we wonder why our soul is messed up behind those kind of people. People who lie on us, talk about us, misuse us, and abuse us. And yet we're wondering why we can't do the same to them because we are cut from another leather. Cut from another cloth, cut from another breed. We we have different roots. We come from another tree. We're not made of the same thing. They are made of. And so here's what I want you to know in this verse. Point one. Don't worry about what God can handle. Help me preach. Just tell somebody, don't worry about what God can handle. Listen, if, if your worries are not greater than the creation, God can handle it. If your worries, like Moses, was not greater than God parting, parting the Red Sea, drying the land and letting Israel cross over, then letting the enemies get in the middle of the Red Sea, closing the waters and drowning them, then God can handle it. If your problem isn't like Elijah's on Mount Carmel with 850 prophets, 400 of Baal and 450 prophets uh, of the grove and yet 850 against him and his God. And he says, well, since I'm already outnumbered, you pray first to your God and whatever God answers by fire, let him be God. And he lets them pray from nine in the morning till three in the afternoon and that God never answers. And he says, excuse me, it's my time. And he calls on God and he prays a 63 word prayer and God rains down fire from heaven. And you know the rest of that story. God can handle it. If your problem isn't worse than a woman with a blood problem for 12 long years who said if I could but touch his garment I shall be made whole. He can handle it. If your problem wasn't loving others and they hated you and you came down, listen, made a trip that took 42 generations to get here, took on the body of flesh as a babe born of a virgin, came to save the very folk who wind up hating you and nailing nails in your hand, nails in your feet, put a crown of thorns on your head, pull the hairs out your beard, spit in your face, talked about you were not who you say you were, and yet you said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, and he talked six more times to God, gave up the ghost. If that was not your problem, then listen, God can handle it. The late R.W. Schambach say, if your problem is not greater than the resurrection, then you ain't got no problem because God can handle it. What, what, what are you fretting about? What stops you from living? What stops you from doing? What stops you from being who God 
has called you to be. But the fact that you're worrying about evildoers and being envious against the workers of iniquity. Here's why you ought not worry, because I told you in this verse, God can handle it. But I'm so glad it doesn't stop in verse 1. Verse 2 goes on to say, For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Point number two. Don't think God is letting your enemy get away. See, you wouldn't fret if you knew God had this thing fixed. You wouldn't fret if you knew God was giving them a chance to get right, to repent, and to turn around and get it together like he gave you. You wouldn't fret. If you knew if their hearts would never be turned right and that they would never come to God, that God was not going to let them get away. He was simply getting them time to get it straight. That vengeance belonged to the Lord. Listen, he will repay, the Lord says. So why do you let all the stuff that mess your mind up? Your thoughts up, your heart up concerning the folk that don't like you. As a matter of fact, what you don't understand is the more folk that don't like you, it's probably a sign that it's because God does love you. And the more of you that becomes like God the more the haters of the world will hate you. Jesus say, you know if the world hated you, that it hated me before it hated you. Don't get yourself twisted. They hate you because you all of that. They hate you because I'm all that in you. Somebody missed that. They ain't hating on you because you are who you are. They hating on you because of the Jesus that shines through you. Don't think nobody is getting away with anything that hurts the believer. And what you ought to take joy in is the fact that they keep that mess up, they will soon. Tell somebody my enemies will soon be cut down. Yeah, you, you need to tell your enemy if you knew who you were messing with. You'd cut that foolishness out and get yourself together. I ain't got to put my hands on you. I ain't got to put my mouth on you. I ain't got to wish nothing bad happens to you. God done told me if you keep on acting like you acted, you shall soon be cut down. Like the grass and wither as the green herb. Last thing I'm going to tell you and I'm going to my seat. The Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. Verse 3. Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily, thou shalt be fed. This, this verse here, I, I want to. I want to caption it as, don't be weary in well-doing. I, I really think I need to take a moment here and tell the believers, don't be weary in well-doing. You see, because no matter what they do, the evildoers, no, no matter how the workers of iniquity, iniquity work their vainness, foolishness and nothingness, God still requires you 
to do good. I know, I know you get to that point in the flesh where you say, I ain't going to be another one of those. I know you get to that point in the flesh and say, Lord, have mercy. If, if, if I wasn't changed. And then you say, listen, and if they keep on right now, they're going to find out that I am saved, but I ain't fully converted. Don't sit there and act like folk can't get under your skin if, if the Holy Spirit isn't residing there during the time they're trying to get next to you. Because see, the Bible says, thou will keep him in peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The moment you get your mind off of God and start putting it on the haters and the naysayers and the folk who's messing with you, then the old man is resurrected. And all those words you thought you had put away, had forgotten, had abandoned, y'all not talking to me this morning. You'll be surprised how when the old man get up, those words get up with him. Am I talking to anybody in the house? Amen, brother. <laughs> They make you want to lay hands on him and not in the godly way. But the Bible says, trust. Trust. That's the word that opens the door for the rest of this to happen. You see, if you don't trust the Lord, you're not going to believe verse 2, which says, uh, that they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. If you don't trust verse 3, then you don't believe verse 1, which says, I, I shouldn't mess myself up, my mind up, get angry, upset, worried, anxious about what evildoers are doing and the workers of iniquity are trying to do. But if I trust in the Lord and conjunction tied together, do good. See, I can't trust in the Lord and do evil. I can't trust in the Lord and do the same. But I have to trust in the Lord and do good. Because when I do good, it is representative of who's good on the inside of me. Because I'm not operating out of the flesh then when I do good, I'm operating out of the spirit. And so especially when folk are trying to upset my nerves, especially when folk are trying to mess my spirit up, especially when folk are trying to show me they don't care nothing about me. I've got to do good at that time more than any other. Otherwise, I become no better than they are. But then it says, so shalt thou dwell. The word dwell means to do well in the land. My doing well is not predicated upon the folk that don't want me to do well. My doing well is predicated on my doing good. God is the one who opens my doors. God is the one who make my ways. God is the one who make the crooked paths straight. God is the one who takes all of my cares and my concerns and fixes them and handles them and removes that burden from me when I trust him. God is the one who knows my enemy and where they live. God is the one who knows what my enemy is working with, but they don't know what he's working with. 
God is the one who has given me the comfort and assurance of knowing what shall we then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us there's nobody there's nothing that can prosper against the people of God when we trust in God you ought to tell your enemy in your heart and your mind you've worried my nerves for the last time I'm gonna keep my mind on the Lord I've cried my last tear over your messing with me fooling with me trying to take me out and take me down God has got this thing fixed you got to be able to say the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Yeah, and the strength of my life. Listen, the Lord is our dwelling place in all generations. The Lord hears my cry, sees my tears. The Lord answers my prayers, picks me up, turns me around. The Lord, oh God, promise me that he will provide for me verily, truly, thou shalt be fed. Your provisions will be met. Stop worrying about the enemy and start blessing God thanking him for what he's able to do thank him for what he's going to do thank him for what he's already done thank him for what he's doing right now thank you that you don't have to leave here the same way you came thank you you've got understanding inspiration deliverance peace joy underneath your skin be not weary in well doing God bless your hearts this morning the doors of the church are open whoever you are my brother my sister hmm. I want to encourage you today because the more you live for God the more the enemy is going to try and turn you around. Keep your focus on God. Not on your enemy. Not on the evildoers. He is the one. He is the one that our attention, our affection, our allegiance should go to not to anyone else no one else can do me like God can do me and when I learn that and apply that to my daily life you will discover that God shows up in your situation and what you can't handle what you can't fix don't you ever forget God can I said God can. I said God can. The doors are open. Whoever you are, my brother, my sister, come on, this is your time. This is your time. Don't fret over the enemy. He blesses you. This is, 
this is your time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Starting me on. As one today who will say to the Lord, Lord, you woke me up this morning and I'm glad about it. And though I might not be all that I ought to be, I thank you for the grace to come to you and to get it right. I thank you for the obedience of not only hearing your call, but answering your call. If he's speaking to you, if he's calling you, this is your time. Then he started me on my way. The Lord. One more time, the Lord, He is. Yes, He's doing it. Is there another starting me on oh, my way? Well, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. 